Good afternoon, Grade 11 Tourism Learners. Thank you for joining in today. Uh, we are just going to give two more minutes um, just to make sure that everybody who wants to join the session is with us and are ready for today's class, um, for today's online class. So if you can just give us two more minutes. Thank you. Okay, so it seems like everybody is now joined into the session. So once again, um, welcome Grade 11 Tourism Learners and welcome to today's online class. Um, today's class will also be uh, or will once again be a dual session, which means that the session will be presented in Afrikaans and English. So by welcome all of you, all of my learners. Um, so today's session will be a dual session. Wees. So what it means is that it in Afrikaans and English is going to be Ons gaan dan nou vandaag um, begin, or we're going to start today to look at specific um, SADC member countries. The first four countries that we're going to look at for today is, as you can see on the screen, it's um, Angola, Botswana, um, the Comores, uh, the, and then the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the DRC. So, ons gaan vandaag nou specifiek begin kyk na de SOG lande. Die eerste vier lande waar ons gaan kyk is Angola, Botswana, Comores and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, or the DRK. Okay, so just to introduce myself, my name is Serena Jordan, and I am the Educational Specialist for Services, Subject and Social Sciences, and then more specifically for Tourism. So let's just quickly go over a few basics. Um, for those of you who are new, um, who don't know these, um, if you are struggling to hear me, please make sure that your audio is on and that your speaker volume is turned up you will automatically be muted when joining the session. And should you have any question, you can ask your question either in the question box or um, I can ask you a question and then you can just click on the raise your hand um, icon. The raise your hand icon you will find um, on your dashboard, which is either below or on your right. Then to download this presentation, you can go to the handout box, um, which is also either below or on your right. Then you can download it from there. Um, and please remember to ask us any questions and you can put those questions for us in the question box and then we, we can answer it. If we don't get time in the session, we will definitely answer it afterwards. Then attendees, you are encouraged to ask questions. Please ask questions, please leave comments, but or however irrelevant or inappropriate comments will result in an attendee being dismissed from the session. If we did not get to your session, please send us an email to academics at impact.co.za and then questions in the question box will be answered and made available um, after this session. Um, if you did not receive these questions and answers, please send us an, in, uh, an email to info at impact.co.za. Then this um, uh, online classes is recorded and you can view these sessions afterwards by, um, by visiting our Impact web, uh, website. There is the link that you can follow to go onto our website and then you can click on the COVID-19 online schooling and then you can click on the previous classes um, button and then you can just search for your subject and grade um, and then your, um, you can view the online or the recordings over there. Good, so my name is Serena Ordoan and I am the specialist for the Dienstepakke and Sociale Wetenskappe and then more specific for tourism. So as you might can hear, I'm sure that you will be your clank mooi hard and upgestel is, so that you alles can hear what we are going to bespreek. Um, as you aansluit for the session, you will be gemute. With other words, we can't hear you, we can't hear you, we can't hear you. 
Dan, um, jullie zal zien op jullie rechterkant of aan de onderkant um, op jullie dashboard is daar een raise your hand icoon. So as jy daar klik, dan um, sal jou handkie opgaan. So dit is maar net as ons dalke vraag het, vraag dier die sessie of as jy iets is um, wil vraag. Dan kan jy die aanbieding wat ons vandag aanbied, kan jy al gaan aflaai in die handout box. Jullie sal sien dat ze Afrikaanse en Engelse weergave. Dan is het ons moedig jullie aan om vraag te vraag. Jullie kan het vir ons in die vraagbox los. Als ons nie gedurende die sessie by jou vraag uitkom nie, sal ons het definitief beantwoord na die sessie. Dan is het ons moedig jullie aan om vraag te vraag en om commentaar te lever, maar als het irrelevant of onvanpas is, gaan dit beteken dat je van die sessie af verweider sal word. Als ons nie by jou vraag uitkom nie en jy het nog een vraag wat jy wou gevraag het, is jy meer as welkom om het vir ons te stuur na academics.info.co.z uit toe. En dan alle vragen in die vraagbox sal beantwoord word en dan sal dit na die tijd beskikbaar maak. As jy dit nie ontvang het nie, kan jy e post hier na info at impact.crz uit doen. Dan um, die opnames van hierdie sessies, nie net vir die specifieke online sessie nie, maar vir enige ander vak, kan jy gaan kyk of gaan kry op ons impact webblad. Daar kan jy die skakel volg, dan kan jy net klik op die COVID-19 online schooling en dan kan jy gaan na die previous classes toe en dan kan jy maar net filter per Um, per graad en per vak en dan sal jylle die, um, die recordings um, van, van die sessies daar so kry. Goed, so ek dink, um, I think we are ready to start the session. Before we go on, can I just quickly see some hands if you can hear and see me and if you can see the presentation. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear and see what is going to happen today. Okay, perfect. Seems like everybody can see and hear me. Okay. So let's start. So first of all, just a quick overview um, of term three. So last week, um, we looked specifically at regional tourism. And then today we're going to start to discuss all the SADC countries that falls into our specific regional tourism. So as I said, we're going to look at Angola, Botswana, Comoros, and then the Democrat Democratic Republic of the Congo. So, net die oorsag oor kwartaal, oor kwartaal 3. So, laas week het ons gekyk na streekstoerisme en wat dit ons behals. En dan vandag gaan ons na specifiek kyk of begin kyk na die verskillende SOG lande en wat hulle alles bied. Um, en dan ook kyk wat er van hierdie lande het werelderfenis gebiede in hulle land as een besienswaardigheid. So, die lande waar ons gaan kyk is Angola, uh, Botswana, die Comoros en dan die Democratische Republiek van Congo. Ok, so first of all, we're going to start with the first um, country, the first SADC country, which is Angola. In your question box, quickly type for me there if you know what the capital city of Angola is. So I want to see how many of you actually know what the capital city of Angola is. So quickly type for me in your question box if you know the answer. Okay, I see one correct answer so far. Two, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's quickly see what is the capital city of Angola. So here is some facts for, uh, or tourist facts. Uh, we need to know this if we want to um, suggest or make a suggestion for tourists to go to Angola. So yes, the capital city is Luanda. Okay. So, and here's just the flag of Angola. So this is how the, um, the, the national flag then also looks, looks like. Then if we look at the currency, the currency that they use in Angola is Kwancha. It's also important to inform your tourists about the currency that they would um, need to buy or um, that they are going to use in Angola. And it's Kwancha. And that is how Kwanchas look like. The official language that is spoken in um, Angola is Portuguese. The climate is very much tropical. Um, it's pleasant weather throughout the year. Um, so as you all know, Angola is then also closer to the equator. So that's why it also has some tropical um, climate. 
activities that we can do in Angola. There's water sports and then also very much game viewing. Health measurements that your tourist needs to um, take note of um, is take precaution against malaria and yellow fever and do not drink tap water. So you must inform your tourists about these um, precautions or health measures should they want to go to Angola. Then the international airport is Luanda International Airport and the airline that Angola make use of um, the abbreviation TAAMG and this is how their um, the logo looks like, the airline logo looks like. Okay, so that's some tourist facts about Angola. Angola has been suffering the effects of war for several years and they are currently trying very hard to improve their image as a safe and interesting destination for tourists. So here is just a photo of how it looks like in Angola. And most importantly, we must understand where Angola is situated on an African um, map or on the African continent. And you will see here that it's colored in red. So that is where Angola is situated. It's just above Namibia. Okay, and as you can see, it, it, it moves closer to the equator, which means or which helps with the um, very tropical climate that um, Angola um, experience in their country. So Angola um, krijgt nog steeds zwaar van die van die effecten van die oorlog wat um, vier jaar lang al in die land um, tegenwoordig is. En hulle probeer rarig baie hard om hulle beeld um, as een veilige en interessante bestemming vir toeriste um, door te sit. So jylle kan sien hier so op die foto's, hier so is die foto van hoe dit um, weet, in Angola lyk. En dan baie belangrijk moet jy weet waarom Angola te plaas op die Afrika kaart of op die Afrika continent. So jylle kan sien, hy is hier so in um, rooi ingekleer, net boon Namibie, so dit is dan waar Angola geleer is. Ok, so the first attraction that we're going to look at um, is the Kishama National Park, which is located in Angola. It's located northwest, in the northwestern part of Angola, and it's less than 80 kilometers away from the Angolian capital, which is Luanda. The park's name is often spelled as Kushama, so you can see the spelling over here, how it's, um, how it's also spelled. And it covers um, 12,000 um, square kilometers, um, so it's, it's, it's quite a large national park. It was founded in 1938 and it only became a national park in 1957. So these are just some facts about the national park. And it's the only, the only working park in Angola. The wild animals in the big five was wiped out during the war, which is very, um, very sad. But there is a concert, um, concerted effort by conservation groups to bring back the elephants, the rhinos, the buffalo um, to this specific area. Other animals that you can view in this park is the water buck, um, other antelope, the eland, which can also be seen in this park. And then there's also a wide range of bird species that can be viewed um, in this park. So the first beziehungsvorigheid waar ons kyk is dan in Angola gelee, en dit is dan die Kishama Nationale Park. Hy is in die noordwestelike dele van Angola gelee, en hy is uh, minder as 80 kilometer weg van Angola so, um, so hoofstad waar aan Luanda is. Die parkse naam word ook beteiker Kushama gespel, jylle kan daar so sien die spelling, hoe hy beteiker gespel word. Ek kan jylle sien, dit is ook nogal redelike groot park, is 12.000 kubieke um, kilometer um, wat, wat die park dan beslaan. Hy is al reeds gevind in 1938, maar het eers een nationale park geword in 1957. Hierdie Kishama Nationale Park is dan ook die enigste werkende park in Angola. En in die park kan ons wilde diere sien en dan, um, of daar was wilde diere en die groot vijf waar dan um, uitgewis is gedurende die oorloof wat in hierdie land plaasgevind het. Maar daar is rarig een groot effort um, dier um, bewaringsgroepe om die olifant, die rinhoster en die buffel weer terug te bring na hierdie area toe. So dat dit weer um, toeriste na hierdie land toe kan lok. Ander dieren wat, wat ons daar kan sien is die waterboek en dan ander, um, verskye ander boeken en dan ook die eland en dan is daar ook rarig een groot verskye um, 
cool species wat in die park gesien kan word. So the activities and facilities that we can find in this park, um, there's no hotels in the park, but there are lodges that house safari groups. Lodges usually provide accommodation as well as three meals a day to, to the visitors. And only at these lodges are restaurants found. The best time to travel to, um, to this wildlife park is outside of the rainy season, which is then between November and April. And the park is usually closed during rainy seasons as the roads become very muddy and impassable to, to get to the park. So the activities and facilities that we can get in Kishama National Park is there are no hotels, but there are well lodges um, that safari groups are housed. They have an accommodation and also three meals per day for their visitors. And then by these lodges is the only place where the restaurant is open. The best advice that you can give to your tourists when you go to this land to go, is that for all that you now the wild life in the park will come visit, is to go to the region season to go, for instance, in November and April is, and in the park, we are also excited to go to the region season under the pure, pure, modern rock and unbeginnable rock, and then finally to the park to come as a result of the pure region. So this is just some pictures to show you how the park looks like. So this, this is then the Kishama um, National Park in Angola. Then we are moving over to Botswana. So the next other country that we're going to look at is Botswana. Quickly tell me in the question box once again, um, if you know what the capital city of Botswana is. I just quickly want to see whom of you know who the, what the capital city of Botswana is? Yes, I see some correct answers coming through. Remember, guys, this will um, help you in your examination or test. So, um, this is very important to you to know from these different SOHG lands to know and to know. But it is still a little bit for this in short to talk. Okay, I see most of you has answered correctly. So the capital city of Botswana is then Gaborone. Uh, okay, and then this is what um, their flag looks like, the blue with the um, black um, line in the middle. The currency that they use, the Geld Eenheid, is the Pula, and this is how the, the currency looks like, or the money looks like. The official language spoken in Botswana is English. Climate is also very much subtropical, uh, except for the northern um, tropical region. Then the activities, um, the activities in this country is game viewing and wildlife safaris. There's also plane rides and boat rides. We will speak about the boat rides um, when we get to certain attractions in Botswana. The health measures that you must make your tourists or your clients aware of is that there um, is malaria in some of the regions. Um, the international airport, which um, most tourists will make use of when visiting uh, Botswana, is the Sertetse um, Kana International Airport, which is then in Gaborone. The airline that Botswana make use of is Air Botswana. And I hope that you can see, yeah. Air Botswana, this is the logo of how, of what Bot, uh, Air Botswana looks like. Okay, so Botswana is one of Africa's leading ecotourism destinations with a wide range of activities for ecotourists to enjoy. And then here is just some photos of how it looks like in Botswana. Once again, very important, we must um, be able to, to allocate or locate Botswana on an African map. And as you can see, see here, it borders South Africa, so it's one of our neighboring countries. So Botswana is one of um, Africa's um, poor layers as it comes by ecotourism. Um, as a bestemming, there is a wide, wide verschillenheid of activities for ecotourists to enjoy. You will see now as we go to the different um, beschikbaarheden, you will see what the verschillenheid of Botswana is like. So on the longer side, we have a photo of how it looks in Botswana, and then we have a very important thing to know where Botswana is on Africa. And then we have a photo of our neighbor lands, because Botswana is now finally a border with South Africa. 
So the first attraction that we're going to look at um, in Botswana is the Okavango Delta. I think this is also the most popular um, attraction in Botswana and it's located in the northwest Botswana. So it's in, in northwest Botswana where the Okavango Delta is located. It's located deep in the Kalahari Basin and it's often called the Jewel of the Kalahari. Please remember this. I also love to ask this in a short question. What is, um, what is it also called? And it's also called the Jewel of the Kalahari because it's really very magnificent to see. Botswana, uh, Botswana's most um, famous tourist destination or attraction. Um, yes, so it's very much um, one of their famous, famous um, attractions. So the first thing that we have seen in Botswana, where we can see, is the Okavanga Delta. This is in the northwest of Botswana, and it is um, deep in the Kalahari Kom. And it is also commonly um, the jewel of the Kalahari genoem, of the the um, the juweel of the Kalahari wordt hij genoem. En het is dan ook Botswana's uh, bekendste toeriste uh, bezienswaardigheid. So, kom eens kijken een beetje naar de activiteiten en faciliteiten wat ons in ook een Delta kan krijgen. Um, Toeristen kan een groot verschijnheid uh, voelleven en bultleven in hierdie area um, zien, want het is ook een baie natuurlijke omgeving, waar nie ook een wange delta gelee is. Het is ook baie um, geil en groen, want ons rarig baie, baie water in hierdie delta. En dan, um, baie belangrijk, um, die activiteiten wat toeristen kan geniet, is om in een mokoro te rijden. Dit is een traditionele kanoe wat uit een uh, um, uitgeholde stamboom gemaakt is. Zoals jullie kan zien, ik heb veel foto hier ingezet. So dit is hoe een uh, mokoro lijkt. So als jullie jylle ooit zou vragen wat is een mokoro, dit is hoe een mokoro lijkt. Kanoe en dit is ook een baie bekende um, activiteit in um, Botswana. Safari um, groepen um, kan dan ook hier komst um, sig sien doen om um, die vluchten te vat dat hulle oor die delta vat. Die delta is dan ook amper, um, soos, dit lijkt amper soos een baier waarin hy, uh, hoe hy gemaakt is, en het voed dan ook die Okavango rivier. Um, die, die grote wissel van 15.000 um, kubieke kilometer in die droer periode is, tot 22 um, kubieke kilometer gedurende die natter periode is um, in seizoen. En op die eiland is die delta um, in die delta, op, op eilanden in die delta is waar die lodges voorkom waar die toeristen dan kan bly en um, die, die, um, die lodges wissel van baie luxe um, safari kampen na jou basisse accommodatie en dit hang dan af van jou toeristese begroting so as jou toeristese begroting um, gunstig is, kan hulle um, dan in die, die luxe safari kampen gaan bly so the activities and facilities that we can find in the Okavango Delta is tourists can enjoy a variety of bird life and wildlife in this area because it's very much a natural environment. The Delta is very lush and green because there's lots of water that can be found in this Delta. The activities that the tourists can enjoy is a ride in the Mokoro. So um, it's a traditional canoe which is made of a hollowed out stump. So here is a photo um, here on the top right corner of how a makuru looks like. So you can see this is very much an um, activity that tourists can do. Safaris companies also offer sightseeing flights over the delta, which is um, which must be very uh, magnificent. The delta is also shaped like a fan and it's fed by the Okavango River. That's the name of the um, attraction. The size varies from 15,000 square kilometers in the drier periods and 22,000 um, square kilometers during the winter periods. On the islands in the delta there are lodges that can be used by the tourists and it ranges very much from your luxury safari camps to basic accommodation. It will just depend on your tourist budget uh, which accommodation you will book them for them. Okay just some photos of how the delta looks like. So as you can see very much lots of water that comes or that is present in the Okavango Delta. The next attraction in Botswana to be going to look at is the Chobi National Park. The Chobi River is one of Africa's most beautiful rivers and flows through this famous national park in the northern part of Botswana. 
the walls of the Chobe River is um, is an area most visited by tourists and it's famous for the large herds of Cape buffalo and elephant who comes to drink water at this basin. So the following beseenswaardigheid waar ons kyk is the Chobe National Park. Um, the Chobe Rivier is one of um, Africa's most rivieren and it flows through this um, very famous national park in the northern part of Botswana. Die, die balle van die Chobe Rivier um, is een area wat die meeste besoek word door toeriste, want daar kan hulle groot um, troppe kaapse um, buffels en olifante sien wat daar kom water drink. So dis rarig vir jou ekotoerist um, en jou avontuurtoerist um, wat, wat hierdie park kan kom besoek. Die activiteite in hierdie park, um, hulle kan dan ook wild gaan bes besichtig van, um, van jou wilde um, van voertuie wat dan specifiek um, ingerig is om wild te gaan bekyk. Jy kan ook um, van die boot af um, um, wild kyk wat dan um, ritte aanbied op die Chobe Rivier. Toeriste kan um, deelvorm van, um, van staproutes en dan kan hulle ook voels gaan kyk as activiteit in die park. In die park is daar ook um, een verskerring uit hotelle en lodges wat kyter vir alle type toeriste en alle type begroting. So dit is nogal um, een goeie optie as jy, um, as jy toeriste nog nie 100% seker is nie. So daar is een verskerring uit hotelle en lodges wat dan um, vir jou verskerring uit toeriste aanbied. So just some activities and facilities in the Chobe National Park. The visitors can uh, go and view some game from a game vehicle. Or they can view it from boats um, that provide rides on the Chobe River. So um, you can also watch the world from the rivers, from the river. Um, then tourists can then also take part in game viewing and hikes and bird watching. So this is also it's very much for your eco tourist and your even your um, adventure tourist, um, the Chobe National Park. And in the park, there's really a number of hotels and lodges which caters, which caters for all types of tourists and all budgets. So this makes it a very um, nice park for all your uh, for your tourists. So here's just some photos of how it looks like. So here you can see the boat ride that tourists can take, and then they can also watch the wildlife from the boat. And here you can see the um, buffalo um, and the elephants that come to drink water at the Chobe National Park, which your visitors can then go and view. Okay, the next um, attraction is the Tsolidu Hills. So the Toledo Hills is a World Heritage Site. It's very important to take note of this. Um, the Tsolidu um, Hills is a World Heritage Site. The area's beauty is spectacular and it's believed to contain spiritual elements. So they believe that there is some spiritual element, uh, elements in this um, Solidi Hills. The original inhabitants of these hills were the sun, um, who left many rock paintings that tourists can still view today. So it's not just in South Africa, but also in Botswana as well. And there are three main hills, which is called the male, the female and the child that can be viewed in this um, attraction. Arge uh, archaeological archaeologists um, believe that these hills have been inhibited for the last 100,000 years, making it one of the world's um, oldest historical sites. So your historical um, uh, tourists will also uh, go and visit these uh, or this attraction. So the following beseenswaardigheid in Botswana is the Solido Hills um, of um, Jewels. This is dan ook a wereld erfenis terrein, so it's very belangrijk om daarvan kennis te dra. Um, hulle is baie lief daarvoor om te dra, um, noem die wereld erfenis terrein, bijvoorbeeld in Botswana. Die area is rarig baie mooi en het het baie mooi natuur uitzicht. En daar word gegloe dat daar sekere spiritual um, elemente in hierdie attraksie of besinswaardigheid voorkom. So die eerste inwoners van hierdie jewels um, is die san en ons baie um, rotstekeninge of rots skilderijen um, wat dan gesien kan word door jou toeriste. Daar is drie hoof jewels wat gesien kan word waar die um, man, die vrou en die kind is. En dan archeoloog glo dat hierdie um, Jewels al bewoon is um, uh, siende of um, 
so ver as al 100.000 jaar gelede, wat dit dan die wereldse oudste historische um, terrein maak. Met ander woorde, jou historische toerist sal dan ook belangstel om hierdie um, besienswaardigheid te besoek. Okay, the activities and facilities in um, this attraction is that there is a museum that's built to provide information to the tourists. Visitors can use three different hiking trails, which is the Lion Road, the, the Rhino Road, and the Cliff Road. So guides of the Sun and hum, um, Hambuksu tribes nearby can be arranged. So as we look at the activities and facilities that in this solid um, level square come, is that there is a museum is that is built to provide information to your um, visitors. And the visitors can then follow three um, step routes to the view of the um, Renoster and the, um, the, the Berg um, routes. Is. And then is there also guides of the Sun and the Hambuksu um, um, groeperingen wat gereel kan word, so daar van die toeriste is, wat um, die gidsen nodig het, of so met hulle wil loop. Then, once again, just some photos of how it looks like in the Soledi Hills. You can see here, there is the paintings, uh, the sun paintings that can also be viewed in the caves of this, um, of this attraction. So net een paar foto's van hoe dit dan nou lyk in hierdie besienswaardigheid, of by hierdie besienswaardigheid. Ok, so the second last um, SADC country that we're going to look at for today is the Kumos. Um, before we get to their tourist fact, once again quickly tell me if you know what the capital city is of the Kumos. You can once again Put it for me in the question box. I just quickly want to see if you guys know what the capital city is of Le Camus. Yes, I see a few correct answers coming through. Okay, so let's look at the Camus. So most of you were correct. Capital city of Le Camus is Moroni. Um, and this is how their flag looks like. Very colorful. Currency that they use is the Comorian franc, and that's how the currency or the money looks like. The official languages spoken in the Comores is Comorian, Arabic, and French. Their climate is very tropical um, as well, and it's moderate. Um, moderately, the two main seasons are distinguished by the rainfall. You will also note that the Comores, um, I'll show you now. Uh, now um, where it's located with regards to the African map. Um, it's also in the Indian Ocean, which um, creates very small, uh, which creates very favorable um, temperatures or climates. Activities that we can do in the Comores is wildlife, and you can look at the beaches. Um, health measures is um, that you must inform your uh, tourists or your clients about is to, to take precaution for hepatitis A and um, Detainers, no yellow fever vaccination certificates is required for this country. Then the international airport, if you fly to the Comores, is Prince Said Iraim International Airport that you, um, that you will land in if you go to the Comores. And the airline that they make use of is Air Comores. And there's just a photo of how Air Comores looks like. Okay. So just a few. Um, a few facts about the Comores. It's then also the 16th edition to the SADC countries in the, um, is the Comores, as it was nominated at the 37th SADC summit, which was held in August, um, between the 19th and the 20th of August in 2017, which was held in Pretoria, South Africa. So the Dikki Comores is well me in your handbook, it's not in your textbooks, but you have to know about the Comores. So the Comores is the 16th toevoeging to the SOG lande. And it was so genomineer op the 37th SOG um, uh, uh, beraad, wat in Augustus gehou word, dus in die, uh, wat op 29 Augustus in 2017 gehou was, in Pretoria, Suid-Afrika. So this is what the Comores looks like. It's a very famous destination, uh, especially for people who want to go um, on a honeymoon. 
So if we look at Africa, you will see here the Comores is here um, on the eastern side of the African continent in the sea. So it's um, it's basically in the one of those islands that's in the sea. So please um, locate yourself uh, when it comes to the Comores. So maak net seker dat jy bewus is waar die Comores geleer is in, in, in terme van die streek en in terme van die Afri Afrika continent. Het is in die ooste kant geleer en die Indische Oceaan is die eiland daar geleer. Goed. So the first attraction that we're going to look at is Mount um, Karatala. It's an active volcano and it's also one of the largest. It's located on the south southern part of the Ingajitja Island. Um, hiking and bird watching um, include some of the activities at this attraction. And then this is how um, it looks like, the attraction looks like. So you will see that this is an active volcan that is geleer is in the Comores. So that is one of the um, besienswaardigheden that is seen can be in the Comores. The next one we look at is Moheli. This place is very um, it's a bit uh, bekend or very um, günstig um, as a result of the biodiversity and the natural ecosystem that it comes. It has also a very diverse wild life that it comes. And then there are also skillpaaien that can be seen on the strand. And then there are also other um, uh, species, full species, that can be seen on the strand. The Park Marine de Mouli is a um, beschermed area in het huisvesten verschillende van dieren en reptielen in die omgeving. Die het saam meer um, uh, gemeenskap en moeilie is waar die um, sie skilpaaie um, uh, ge gebreed word. Met ander woorde, hulle word daar um, kyk hulle na die, na die um, skilpaaie om te kyk, laat hulle uitbroei en, en nie versteer word dier ander toeriste nie. En dit, alhoewel dit nog steeds toeriste trak na hierdie deel van die wereld toe. Dit is dan ook een van die bekendste um, boude, omdat dit die groot um, vruchte um, uh, um, vlaarmuis in die wereld huisvees. So the next attraction in the Comores is Mohili. It's, um, this place is favorite, uh, favorite when it comes to biodiversity and natural ecosystems. And it also has diverse uh, wildlife. Then turtles can also be seen at these beaches and um, um, other uh, endemic bird species that can also be found on this um, on this island. Then the Parc Morin de Molly is a protected area and it houses a variety of animals as well as reptiles. Then at um, Itsamia, it's a village in Molia, uh, which is the sea turtle breeding um, site, which also protects the turtles um, against other um, tourists although it attracts tourists um, uh, from different parts of the world to come and see this breeding site. In this forest, one can see the iconic big fruit bat in the world that is also that can be found in this um, attraction or at this attraction. So this is how it looks like. And as you can see, the turtles, that the sea turtles that can be found here. So you can see a few prints of how it looks like. And so you can see the sea skill that is on the strand of this uh, beautiful forest. So the next attraction is Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro is a volcano that is located on the the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Let's quickly see who knows what the capital city is of the DRC. You guys are very clever today. Okay, so all the answers that came through is correct. So let's have a look at the DRC. So some tourist facts about the DRC. So yes, the capital city of the DRC is Kinshasa. And this is how their flag looks like. Um, the golden star with the blue background and then the um, red ribbon that runs diagonally over this um, flag. The currency that they make use of is the Congolese franc and this is how um, the money looks like so that your tourists can know 
what to, to um, deal with or what their currency is that they use in the country. Official language spoken in the DRC is France. Climate is also very hot and humid in equ uh, equatorial river basin and drier in the highlands. Activities that can be um, found or can be done in the DRC is mainly your wildlife viewing, especially your mountain gorillas. You will see in the attractions that we are going to um, look at today very much um, the mountain gorillas. Health measures that you have to warn your clients or your tourists against is malaria, which is a severe problem in this area. Also yellow fever, cholera, so don't drink water, a bellagia, uh, meningitis occurs in your rural areas. Okay, the international airports in um, in the DRC is the Ndele International Airport and then also your Kinshasa International Airport. Airline that they make use of is uh, Lignes, um, Irianes, Congolias and numerous other private airlines that they make use of but that is the airline mostly used by or in the DRC. Okay, um, so the Democratic Republic of the Congo is known for the rare animal species, which is the Okupani, um, the mountain um, gorillas, chimpanzees and um, bonobos, which is also a type of chimpanzee. And this is how it looks like in the DRC. And once again, very important to be able to locate uh, the DRC on an African map. It's more or less in the middle of Africa, if you view it as a whole. Um, I've colored it in there in the red so that you can see where the DRC is located. So the um, an Afrikaans part is from the DRK, the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, is very bekend for the scarce dieren that are forekom. Um, uh, is very what what very focused is on the um, type of gorillas and chimpanzees that are forekom. So the Okupani, the park gorilla, the chimpanzees. Any bon, uh, bonobos, uh, what then work a type of um, chimpanzee is. Let's quickly look at their attractions. The first one that we're going to look at is the Kwazi Binga National Park. If you see Kwazi Binga, these are two mountains, so they have combined the two mountains as the name for the national park. Kwazi Binga, Binga. Once again, also very important to note that this park was declared a World Heritage Site in 1980. And the reason for this was to protect the gorillas from um, the consequences of war and illegal poaching. Okay, very important to know this. Then it's located on the eastern part of the land um, near the Kivwa Lake and it borders Rwanda. So as you can see here, the park was named of the two elaborate volcanoes, which is Mount Kauzi and Mount Biga. So you can see here Kauzi Biga. Um, the, the park boosts a large number of um, chimpanzees and gorillas. So there's a lot of chimpanzees and gorillas that can be found in this national park. So the Kauzi Biga National Park, what in the DR, DRK um, gelee is, is in 1980 as a world for and is very important to know this. And the reason for was om gorillas to beskerm dier um, die al ewige um, gevechte wat daar voorgekom het, en dan ook um, die um, uh, illegal uh, poaching, die, die onwettige um, uitwis of that is the park is Belgelee in the oostelijke deel van die land and it is nabij the um, uh, Kivu Meer and it grens aan Rwanda and then is the park where um, was dan vernoem na twee uitgewiste vulkane uh, waar dan um, Berg Kuzi and Mar Berg Piga uh, is. So this dan dan ook waar die naam van die nationale park van daan kom. En dan um, is dit dan ook hulle doel om dan um, die die um, die hoeveelheid chimpanzees en gorillas in die park te behou. So the activities and facilities that can be found in this park, it's a dense human population around the park and high um, indents of poverty leads to conflict over the use of natural resources. 
the main activities for tourists in and around the park include your game viewing, um, also hiking trails, and then also your cultural activities. Okay, so um, there's a baie um, dichte bevolking rondom hierdie park, en daar kom ook baie oe armoede in hierdie land vooral voor, en dit lei baie keer tot conflict oor die gebruik van natuurlijke hulbronne. Die activiteiten wat toeriste in hierdie land kan doen, uh, is om wild te gaan besichtig, of hulle kan gaan staproutes doen, of daar is ook culturele activiteiten waarin hulle kan deelneem. So here is just some pictures of how it looks like in the park, met a paar foto's van hoe die park lyk, en dan sal julle ook jy so sien die bergkorilla, wat dan nou vooral in hierdie park um, voorkom. Then the next um, attraction that we're going to look at is the Virunga National Park. This park was also declared a World Heritage Site in 1979. The park was formerly known as the Albert National Park and was founded in 1925 by King Albert of uh, Belgium, but it's now the Virunga National Park. It's the first national park that was established on the African continent outside of South Africa. And it's located on the northeast of the um, DRC. So it's north on the northeastern side. And it's also once again created to protect the gorillas that remain in the Virunga Mountains. So the volgende besienswaardigheid waar ons kyk is die Virunga Nationale Park. Weer eens belangrijk om te weet dat het een uh, uh, werelderfenis terrein verklaar is in 1997. Dat was eerst bekend als die Albert Nationale Park, wat um, in die reden daarvoor was, dit was gevind in 1925 door koning Albert van België. Is dat ook die eerste nationale park wat dan gestig was op die Afrika continent buiten Zuid-Afrika. Het is geleer op die noordoostelijke deel van die DRK. En dit is weer eens um, gestig um, om die, die, die gorillas te, te bewaar wat in die berge van die Virunga voorkom. Activities and facilities that we can find in this park. It's a very popular park attraction in which includes the hot springs of the Rewindi Plain and two active volcanoes, the Namuruga and the Nirangonga. Um, this park has a wide variety of wildlife, which is your elephants, then definitely the chimpanzees, gorillas, hippos, buffaloes, and many more. Bird watching and hike trails is um, in the forest are also very popular um, activities to do uh, for your tourists when they um, when they visit this park. So the park is very bekend for um, activities or attractions, um, warm water bronze. Um, voorkom op, op, um, op die Rwindi en op, omdat daar twee um, actieve vulkane was wat die Namurungla en die Riangonga um, vulkane is. Hierdie park het dan ook een baie verskaardenheid van wildlewe wat jy olifante, die chimpanzees, die gorillas, die seekoeie, die um, buffels en nog veel meer insluit. Hulle kan ook um, voel... Um, Full species hier besichtig en dan kan hulle ook op staproutes gaan wat baie, wat baie populair is vir toerist om te doen. So once again just some photos of how it looks like in the park. Here you can see the wildlife and then um, you know it's very much a, a beautiful scenery that you can find in this park. So it's net a paar foto's van hoe dit dan nou lyk in hierdie Virunga Nationale Park en soos julle kan sien die wildlewe wat voorkom in hierdie park. Then the last attraction um, that we're going to look at for today is the Salgonga National Park. Once again, also, this park was declared as a World Heritage Site in 1999. It's the world's second largest rainforest and largest in Africa. And it's situated along the Congo River through which the wildlife um, park flows. The park can only be reached by, by boat as there are no roads in this area. The park is located between King Sasha and Kisingani and then is established uh, again to protect uh, endangered species such as the bon Bonobo, which is a type of chimpanzee, your bush elephant and the African crocodile. 
So die laaste besienswaardigheid waar ons vandag gaan kyk, wat voorkom in die DRK, um, is dan die um, Shalonga Nationale Park. Um, die park was dan ook verklaar als een wereldarfenisterrein in 1999 en is die wereldse grootste um, reen, um, reenwoud en dan ook die grootste in Afrika. En dit is dan gelee langs die Congo rivier wat um, dier hierdie park dan ook vloei. Hierdie park kan slechts verrijf word dier boot, omdat er geen paaie is wat na hierdie park te leid nie. Dit is ook geleerd tussen Kinshasa en Kishingana, waar dan ook um, door gestig is om die uh, bedreigde species te bewaar, soos die bonobo, waar die uh, type chimpanzee is, jou boosolifant, en die Afrika um, krokodil. Activiteiten en faciliteiten wat ons in die park kan vind, um, dat is meer dan 100 species, um, full species, wat al opgemerkt is in die park, so die toeristen kan gaan voel kyk. Die ja, culturele toerist kan traditionele kultuur um, van die Ilanga gemeenskap beleef. So the activities and facilities in this park is there are more than 100 species of birds that, that has been recorded in this park. Cultural tourists can also enjoy the traditional culture um, of the Ialima community in this park. And then just once again, some photos of how it looks like in this national park. Okay, grade 11, it was a lot of information that we had to go through for today. Um, and we are still going to continue to look at in our next session um, with regards to the Saudi countries. So we're going to look at the next countries when we meet or when I see you guys again. But here is just an example of the typical type of questions that you can expect in a test or an examination. So they can ask you or they love to ask um, match column A to column B. So what they'll do is they'll give you the country and then you must match it to an attraction that occurs in, um, in this specific country. So my suggestion would be is to make a, a, a mind map so that you can um, allocate the different attractions to the specific countries so that you don't get confused what attraction matches what country. So grad elf, hierdie was nou um, a klomp inlichting wat ons doorgegaan het oor die verskillende of oor die eerste SOG lande waar ons vandag gekyk het. As ek julle weer sien, dan gaan ons voortgaan om te kyk na die verskillende lande of die verskillende SOG lande wat daar dan nog is. En dan, hier soos jy kan sien, het ek vir julle net een typische vraag um, neergesit van wat jy kan verwag in het iets of examen. Jy is hier toch voor om dit in een koorsvraag te vraag, so dat jy byvoorbeeld die land met een specifieke besiensvaardigheid um, kan pas. So my voorstel aan jou sal wees om dalk een mindmap vir jouself te maak, so dat jy kan weet wat er besiensvaardigheid pas by wat er land. Goed. Um, so please, if there's any other questions that you want to ask, um, you can quickly put it for me in the question box. Um, okay, I see there is someone that is asking um, for um, previous week's um, handouts. Can you maybe just put for me your email address in the question box as well so that I can make sure that I send it to the correct email? If you don't mind, then we make sure that we get it to you. So, grad elf, as daar enige vraag is, wat jylle nog wil vraag, as jylle dalk dit gau vir my in die question box sal sit. Um, see, there is a question, uh, we will then carry on with, um, with the next SADC um, countries and we will discuss their specific um, attractions. So, um, don't, um, don't worry if you can't match um, the questions as per um, the example that I've given you here. Don't um, do not stress about that. We will definitely cover all the countries with all their attractions so that at the end you, you would be able to match the attraction with the country. So don't be, don't worry about that. Okay. So then if you're not registered with Impact and you want to ask us something, you can send us an email to info at impact.co.za. So as you not get registered with Impact and you want to ask us iets voor ons uitvind, kan jylle ons contact by info at impact.co.za. 
Then grade 11, that is all for today. I will then see you again in two weeks' time when we will discuss the next SADC countries. So grad af, hier is dan al vir vandag. Ek sal julle dan weer oor twee weke sien. Dan bespreek ons die volgende SOEG lande saam met hulle attracties. So please keep safe, keep warm, make sure that you still um, study hard um, and make sure that you um, do all the tasks that you are supposed to do for term two. So as a belief, um, bly veilig, hou julle self gezond in hierdie wintertijd en hou julle self warm. Um, dan sien ek julle weer oor twee weke. Tot ziens.